Sweden has a lot to celebrate in 2023. Our king celebrates 50 years on the throne and the country of Sweden turns 500 years old. Or does it really? The National Day of Sweden is June 6, and that date was chosen because it's when King Gustav Vasa was elected back in 1523. That marks the date when Sweden broke free from the Kalmar Union and became its own independent country. What do you think of Gustav Vasa? He was king of Sweden for 500 years ago, and he did a lot for Sweden. Absolutely, he did. So everything adds up, doesn't it? If I'm counting correctly, 1523 is 500 years ago, and that's when Sweden broke free to become its own nation. So the country is 500 years old, isn't it? I don't think it's that simple, though. Let's go back even further into the murky depths of history. <laughs> Fifteen thousand years ago, Sweden was mostly covered with ice, except for some parts in the south. But as the ice age ended, the geography of Sweden changed. Large areas of Sweden became flooded as the ice melted, and great lakes such as Vänern and Vätten were formed during that time. That was roughly 10,000 years ago, and at that time there were settlements all over Sweden, from the north to the south. Those were Stone Age settlements with a mix of reindeer herders from the north, farmers that migrated from Anatolia, and hunters from Siberia. Around 5,000 years ago, even more people migrated to Sweden from Russia and Ukraine. Those tribes brought with them battle axes and gave the foundation to the Swedish tradition of battle axes that continued into the Viking Age. The Stone Age gave way to the Bronze Age some 3,000 years ago, and then to the Iron Age several hundred years later. And after that came the Vandal Age, followed by the Viking Age, which you're probably quite familiar with. This is all very simplified, of course, but the main point is that people have lived in what we call Sweden for thousands of years. So why do we say that Sweden is 500 years old? Maybe the name Sweden is 500 years old, could that be the reason? No, not really. The name Sweden was first mentioned in the Beowulf epic in the 8th century, that's 1600 years ago. Back then it was called Sviorike, which is an ancient form of Sviarike, the realm of the Sviar. That name was simplified to Sviarike, which eventually turned into Sverige, which is the modern Swedish name for Sweden. The Sviar were a group of people living in Sweden during the Iron Age, and there was another group of people called the Götar. Around the year 1000, King Olof Skötkonung was elected king of both the Sviar and the Götar. It wasn't a complete unification of the two peoples, but it marked a time when a large section of Sweden was united under a single king. So why don't we say that Sweden is 1,028 years old, because Olof Skötkonung became king in 995 AD? Maybe it's because he only ruled parts of what's known as Sweden today. Is that the reason why we insist that Sweden is just 500 years old? The realms of the Sviar and the Götar only covered a small part of Sweden. Eventually, Sweden conquered more territory and parts of Finland as well. But Sweden in 1523 didn't look much like the modern Sweden either. In 1523, Sweden didn't include the southern parts of the country, and a large piece in the west belonged to Norway. And Finland belonged to Sweden, which it most definitely doesn't do today. So geography isn't the answer. Sweden has changed borders a lot over the centuries. Neither Sweden in 1523 nor Sweden in the 1100s looks like it does today. So once again I have to ask, why do people say that Sweden is 500 years old? <music> 
let's talk about the Kalmar Union. The Kalmar Union was a union of the Scandinavian countries, Denmark, Norway and Sweden. At a meeting in the town of Kalmar in 1397, the three nations crowned Eric of Pomerania as king of the union. He was succeeded by Christopher of Bavaria in the 15th century, but after that there was trouble in paradise. Christopher had no successor, so both Sweden and Denmark chose their own rulers in 1448. Order was sort of restored in 1457, when the Danish king Christian I was crowned head of the Kalmar Union. But things were rapidly falling apart at the seams. Sweden wasn't happy with a Danish king ruling over the three kingdoms, but they accepted it, grudgingly. That is, until the Danish king Christian II decided that he was the rightful ruler of Sweden and invaded the country. He was crowned in Stockholm in 1520, and then he started the Stockholm bloodbath. Many Swedish nobles were executed as heretics, one of which was Erik Johansson, father of Gustav Eriksson. And this is actually the very spot where they were executed, Stortorget in Old Town. Gustav Eriksson was a rebellious young man who had been stirring up a lot of trouble against the Danes. But when he received the news that his father had been killed by the Danish king, then he got really pissed off. Sweden doesn't have a lot of classically heroic figures, but if there's one person that every Swede knows about, it's Gustav Eriksson. Or as he would be called later, Gustav Vasa. I've made another video about Vasaloppet, the biggest cross-country skiing competition in the world held every year in Sweden. That race is named after Gustav Vasa and his journey to start a rebellion in Sweden chased by the Danish all along the way. Gustav Vasa eventually raised an army and led a rebellion against the Danes. After several years of fighting, he marched into Stockholm and took the city on June 24, 1523, on Midsummer Day. Prior to that, he was crowned King of Sweden on June 6 the same year. And as mentioned, June 6 is Sweden's national day, because that's the day when the first modern King of Sweden was crowned. Every nation has a story about its founding. France has the storming of the Bastille in 1789. The US has the Declaration of Independence in 1776. And Sweden shows June 6 when Gustav Vasa became king and liberated us from the Danes as the story about how Sweden was founded. It's of course all pretty random. There are many other dates and events that could have been chosen. But the most important thing that makes a heroic figure isn't that he performs heroic deeds, it's that he's good at PR. And Gustav Vasa was a master of propaganda. He made people tell stories about his bravery, and he painted himself in a brilliant light. Gustav Vasa became known as the father of Sweden, and King Christian II of Denmark became known as Christian the Tyrant. At least in Sweden, in Denmark he's apparently known as Christian the Good. What do you really think about Gustav Vasa? I think he's a very fascinating uh, character. He uh, led um, a war against the Union uh, that went on for three years. And he was only 27 when he was crowned king and uh, rode in here to Stockholm. It's hard to, to tell what type of person he might have been, but uh, I would say that he's a very fascinating person to say the least. Today it's 500 years since Gustav Vasa marched into Stockholm, taking the city after a long war against the Danes. Marching into Stockholm was a final symbolic act of liberation. This day has been illustrated by Swedish historical painters and national romanticists. And today there is also a special celebration of the event, with a march through Stockholm, speeches and reenactments, and a lot more. Sweden isn't a very nationalistic country, but the story about Gustav Vasa is just about the only thing that stirs up people's patriotism. He's the father of our country, the founder of the modern Sweden, and his bravery saved us from the Danes. But he was also a despot, and most of the tales of his bravery are just complete rubbish. He took power from the church and gave it to the monarchy, and he also confiscated a lot of farms. When he died, he owned more than 5,000 farms and he was the richest man in all of Sweden. 
He schemed and betrayed people, and he ruled the country with an iron fist. And people ate it all up because of his wonderful PR. All these stories about you, are they really true? It depends on who you're asking. A bit of it, not everything. Do you have any wise words for the people of Sweden? To not be afraid for foreigners. You can either work with them or send them out to your country. Don't be afraid. So I guess this costume costs a lot, an arm and a leg maybe? Yeah, <laughs> uh, sure. What do you really think about Gustav Vasa? He pays well. The Swedish kings of the 1600s wanted to have a strong line of kings to refer back to as a foundation for their rule. This was a little bit of a trouble because Sweden hadn't had that many kings yet. They decided to embellish Gustav Eriksson's achievements and in the 1600s they created the name Gustav Vasa. Before then Gustav Eriksson had simply been known as Gustav Eriksson or Kung Gösta. But now the kings Karl IX and Gustavus Adolphus could point back to the mighty lineage of Vasa. The name Vasa became a name of power, as could be seen in the mighty warship Vasa, which uh, unfortunately sank during its maiden voyage. And when national romanticism spread through Sweden in the 1800s and the early 1900s, then the stories of Gustav Vasa became even more embellished. School children in Sweden in the beginning of the 1900s were told complete lies about Gustav Vasa and the glories of Sweden. During the Great Power Era, Swedish kings referred to the name Vasa to show that they had a strong line of kings. And during the 1900s, school kids were fed tales about Sweden's greatness during the Great Power Era, as well as fabricated stories about the glorious King Gustav Vasa, who saved Sweden in the 1500s. Sweden is still pretty supportive of its monarchy today. Our king doesn't do anything useful, but it is nice to have. This year our king, Karl XVI Gustav, celebrates 50 years on the Swedish throne. The king actually had some form of power up until 1975, but since then his duties are only ceremonial. The king is the chief of state, but Sweden is a constitutional monarchy these days. And there are actually many people who want to abolish the monarchy altogether. But it won't happen during our current king's lifespan, and probably not when Crown Princess Victoria takes the throne either. But sooner or later, the days of Swedish monarchy will be over. I think we'll continue to celebrate Gustav Vasa when that happens though. Sweden is sorely lacking when it comes to heroic figures. And even though he was a bit of a tyrant and a power-hungry bastard, he was our power-hungry bastard. And there you have it. That was a quick look into why Sweden turns 500 years old in 2023. I hope you found it interesting. Like and subscribe, but most importantly, have a great day. Now have a look at this video as well for even more information and weird facts about Sweden.